Welcome to the Kayla Ambrose Show. I'm your host and your travel guide to the other side, Kayla Ambrose. To find out more about me and my work, visit my website, exploreyourspirit.com. On there, you'll find my online classes, my books, my private coaching sessions you can do with me, readings, my blog, podcasts, all the good stuff. And while you're there, sign up for my free newsletter where you'll get information about all upcoming things I'm doing. And so we can stay in touch. Okay, we're back with another episode. And today, I'd like to talk about your higher self. Have you heard that term? What is your higher self? The short way to explain it is it's your soul, all of it. All of the beauty that is you. And each time you're born, only a little bit of your soul comes down on the earth plane with you. Just enough to be present here and to be aware and to bring information from the higher planes down into the earth plane. And with enough cords attached to collect all this information for your Akashic records. Your soul has cords that record everything you're doing and deliver that information back. So it's a record of what you've learned, what you tried, what you grew from, what you still need to work on, what you're excelling at, and what uh, you're still having a lot of trouble with. It helps you make plans for every lifetime. Each lifetime, as we go back to the other side, we are back in connection with all of us. So we remember all of our lifetimes, all of our experiences, everything we learned. And so then when we decide to come back down again and we meet with our spirit guides and helpers who are going to help us make a plan of what we're going to learn this time and experience, we can bring all the information from the Akashic Records and then with our higher self, we look at what we most need to work on and, and learn in order to evolve in the quickest way possible. So our higher self is like the smartest part of us. It contains the most wisdom that we've ever gained and has all that great feedback of memories that, that uh, we are forgetting about when we're down here. So imagine if you had someone that remembered all the things you've done and you're going through something really hard and you're like, I just don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Well, your higher self knows that you can. And when you reach out to your higher self, it reminds you and it says, remember back in this lifetime when this thing happened and you could do it. You did that. If you could do that, you could handle this. And so it's important when we're in touch with our higher self that we can get this great communication and feedback and be able to use it to help motivate us to do whatever that we need to do in this lifetime. What's the problem? Well, we are disconnected from our higher self. As we come through the veil into the earth plane, we forget and then we're not taught about it. So we might feel something intuitively, but up until recently, most of us weren't taught, hey, you can go tap into your higher self. We were taught according to what religion wanted us to um, focus on, which was reach out to someone else to get help. So reach out to your priest or your pastor or your guru and let them intervene for you to get help or to ask the angels for help or to ask your guides. And there are good times and important times when it is helpful to reach out to other people. They have information, wisdom, experience that can be helpful. And they have ways to guide you that in a jam when you're not thinking clearly can be extremely helpful. But part of the work and part of the growth and part of you evolving into a wiser person is also leaning on your higher self 
talking to that part of you that knows more about you, knows more about you than anyone or anything. Because it's you. You know what you've gone through lifetime after lifetime. And so the more you continue on the journey, as I call it, being a wisdom student, but whatever you'd like to call your path, the more you're going to learn to talk to your higher self and to see it for what it is and how it can help. Now, what's interesting about this is the more you do this, the more you're going to get comfortable with doing it. And at first, it's going to feel awkward. You're going to try to reach out and have a conversation and you don't know how. And you may try some of the tools uh, that people will give you advice on things to do. One of them is a pendulum. You can take a pendulum, put the white light, protective prayer around it, and then say, this is only me reaching out to my higher self. Only my higher self can respond. Please move the pendulum clockwise for yes, counterclockwise for no, and help me with these questions. And some people do that as a beginning way to learn to communicate with their higher self. You could give any code you want. You could say, uh, I need to know yes or no, and here's how I'm going to know. When I go out today, if the answer is no, the first thing I'm going to see is something in bright red. And if the answer is yes, the first thing I'm going to really see and notice in a big way today is going to be bright green. It has to be something big, like a giant van driving by and, you know, kiwi green or something. Or, uh, you know, another uh, big billboard with like big red apples on it. Not just like a stop sign or something like that. It has to be something really standing out. So you can create all kinds of messages with your higher self of ways to communicate an answer to you in that way. It doesn't matter which way you do it. It's just that you keep practicing and that you keep trying. And eventually, the more you do it, the more it's going to awaken your intuition. And you'll get stronger about it and more comfortable. And then you'll, you'll have more of an intuitive telepathic communication where you realize that your higher self is, is communicating with you all the time. And you'll find, too, that some of the times where you thought it was the universe, that it was actually your higher self making these happen. Instead of like, why is the universe testing me so hard? It's your higher self actually doing that. Your higher self is kind of throwing these things in your direction to get you to get the message. It's not a punishment. It's not like, why is the universe punishing me now and making this bad thing happen? Every time, every time when I try and I get to this place, this thing happens every single time. And why am I being punished? You're not being punished, most likely. It's rare that it's a punishment. It's usually a hint. Like, hey, you need to change something or this is going to be an even bigger problem in the future. You keep doing this the same way. It's not working. You've skated by. But a bigger storm is coming and that is not going to handle it or fix it or weather it like you hope. So change now. And so in cases like that, your higher self will keep bringing the same conversation, the same feelings, the same energy, all of that. It'll keep bringing it up, trying to get you to make a change. So it's like being mad at yourself. You're... Uh, your manager, higher self, who's just trying to help you. And when you see it that way, it, it's kind of funny and you don't worry about it the same way. If you can get to be in touch with your higher self and understand and see what it's doing. When you take it to the next level, after you've identified what your higher self is doing and how it's helping you with your wounds. We all have wounds. Some are fresh, some are old. Um, but they're all there. Some we bring in with us from other lifetimes. Some have been created here. And our higher self wants to help us heal those wounds. And the only way to do that is to remove whatever's at the root that keeps the wound reopening 
or appearing or whatever the incident is that keeps wounding you. And the only way to do that is to get to the root of it and remove that problem, remove that source, so it stops. And your higher self will do that as well. And again, you may be thinking, why is the universe doing this to me? Why does it keep repeating? Sometimes it's karma. And if there's a karma attached, it could be karma and the universe working together. But if you have worked through karma and you re there's nothing left, you feel you've done everything you could, then it is something within you at this point. It is a, a fear you're still holding on to or anger or guilt or in some way you have not healed it as a source within you. So it's reappearing because of that because it needs to be fully healed. Once you understand which one that is, then you can go on to heal it if, if it's through your higher self. Having that conversation with your higher self, saying you understand and that you're resolving to do things differently now. And so this will heal it finally at the last place so that you don't bring any of that back with you when you cross over from this lifetime. At the next level, you begin to understand this for other people. And so as you look at everyone in your life, you realize where they've excelled and where they're still struggling. You are seeing their wounded self, how their wounded self is hurting, where it feels rejected, where it's still struggling. And you may be able to see for these people what parts they're going to be able to change and which they aren't. And you, everyone knows the saying that you can't make anyone change. And you can't. And people say, people don't change. I don't agree with that as much. I agree that you cannot make people change. If a person does not want to change, you can try to force them all you want. They'll never fully change. But if a person wants to change and they truly desire it, then it can happen. If they're willing to do the work, it can happen. It might take them a long time to overcome it, to overcome their thoughts, the patterns they've created. It could be they were even born with a certain type of pattern of thoughts. And they have to work every day to have those thoughts and then overwrite them, overcome them and change them to then vibrate at a different frequency. But if they work at it hard enough, they will change. But that's an internal thing that person has to do because they truly want to. They truly desire it. So all of us are walking around wounded with our wounded selves. One thing or another, usually lots of wounded things. And we talk about this from our childhood onward, how things wounded us in our childhood, how they hurt us. And then when we begin to understand through studying the mystery school teachings that everything's a plan on the other side. We sat down with our higher self and decided, how am I going to come back in this lifetime? Where will I be born? How I pick my parents? I pick the area of the world I'm going to be born. I'm picking my genetics, my DNA, what I'll look like. And I'm putting all these karmic markers in my aura as to what my strengths will be and what my weaknesses will be and to how I will look physically, to how mentally capable I will be, how physically capable, boom, how emotionally capable. Uh, I'll put in karma of things that I need to experience because I experienced them on the other side before and now it's my turn to feel them on this side so I can truly have the wisdom of experience. And understand what it's like to be a, uh, insert whatever you want here, but something on the other side. And we switch back and forth from men to women, from one race to another, from one point of view to another, 
from the staunchest conservative to the most open liberal, whatever you want to describe it. We have been or will be each of those things throughout many lifetimes so that we fully understand both sides. We come here to learn about duality. We come here to learn about balance. We come here to learn about seeing both sides. And eventually as we grow and we master, we learn that there is no one answer. There is no one truth. It's all perspective. And perspective changes according to us and how far we've grown, how we've evolved and developed, what we're willing to do with it. That is why that quote, the more I learn, the less I know, is so appropriate and important because it really is so true. And the smarter you get, the more you realize there's so much more to learn. There's so much out there that's still unknown and unknown even within ourselves, what our higher selves are capable of, how they could communicate and work with us, but we haven't figured out how to turn those switches on yet. There are powers within each of us greater than we're normally using. Science has shown we only use a tiny part of our brain. There are connections and cords in the aura, in our energy bodies that I see within each person that aren't even being utilized right now. There are cords that are waiting to be activated that can bring all type of new dimension and evolution and understanding. And they're being awakened slowly at this time. They're being powered up. I've been watching this for over a decade now as these new cords are expanding within and around each person and attaching. I believe they're going to make us more telepathic and intuitive and even other types of superpowers that we don't even understand yet. They're coming. We are really being built from the inside out with these extra cords that are going to make a big difference in how we live and what we know and how we move through different dimensions. So as we see this within ourselves and we learn with others and we understand that everyone's wounded, everyone's got a story, everyone has an excuse, if you want to say, but we realize we don't have to live by our excuses. If we all have them, then we can all work past them. We can all let them go. We can all put those in the past and release them. And they don't have to define who we are today. They don't have to make us what we are. That's one of the great things about being here in this time right now is things are very fluid. And yes, things are very chaotic and messy and ugly. And it's hard to know what to do. But the beautiful side of it is one can almost do anything. One can almost recreate themselves in any shape or form right now because everything is fluid. And sometimes when you need to make great changes of thought, of willpower, of energy, of magic, it has to go that way. You have to break apart and shatter the old construction. You have to burn the bridge, smash it to bits. There is no retreat. I remember studying in history, and I can't think of who it was right now, but there was a captain or an admiral who would lead ships to war. And he would do something like burn the docks when they left so that there was no way to go back home. He did something like that. And that the only way they were going to uh, be successful was to go forward and get what they needed and have enough money and everything to, to come back uh, somewhere where they could dock and get back. And um, I can't believe I can't remember the rest of that story right now. It was, it was pretty fierce, but 
it's a way of showing there's, you know, no retreat, no surrender. You're going to have to dig deep and find the strength within you to do what you have to do. And that's what's happening in the world right now. We have left the age of Pisces. We're in a new age. And none of the old can remain. So everything is being shattered. You'll see that in earth changes, weather changes, in what people think, how they feel, how they reflect. And you'll see the old guard trying their best to hold on and to keep some things. And you can't really blame them. It's frightening. It's a scary time. It's hard if you don't understand what's happening. You're just trying to hold on to things to keep some kind of normal scene. Trying to keep everything from completely going haywire. But it's important to know it's meant to. It is meant to all break apart. And so then we're going to form new. And I've been seeing this for a lot of years now. My guides were showing me, even with magic, that symbols are going to change. Sacred symbols that are used in metaphysical work and all types of things, those symbols are even going to be different because we are going to be in a different dimensional type of work and activity. And so the symbols themselves actually have to evolve and change to work in these new frequencies. They're, they're too flat. They're too simple in some ways to continue on. So they are going to merge as well. So even the old ways like that are changing. The items we use will be different. The language, the energy, the way we work with the light, the way we work with sound and frequency, all of this is going to be delivered to us through our higher self and then trickle down through the cords into the aura where we begin to have an instinctual knowing. And the younger children who are born now and later will come back with this instinctually. They will know how to act and will be drawn to creating that around themselves from a very early age with, with sound and vibration and energy frequency. They'll have no problems adapting and living in this way. And those of us who have been here a little longer, if we open up and we let go and we are willing to see what's on the path and try it, it will go easier for us. And those of us who have a little more fear, a little more hesitation, trying to hold on to the old ways, it's going to be the toughest. It's going to feel the most frightening to those people and be a challenge for them. What we can do to help each other as we're going through this is we can see the wounds that each person is carrying. And while we can't force them to change, we can have empathy and compassion. And we can plant seeds. This is the time coming up to fall when seeds are planted in the ground for crops, for things to bloom in the spring, whatever spring is for a person. Spring is a time of growth and opening up. So nature shows us that every six months between fall equinox and spring equinox. When we plant seeds of thought within a person, their spring can come at any time, within moments or days or years or lifetimes. But when we plant little seeds of thought, it's helpful. It's not pushy. It's not trying to get someone to change. It's sending a nice thought out to them, saying it to them, that maybe in the future will be something that touches them and helps them move forward. Because we understand everyone has to heal at their own pace. And their higher self is doing the best they can. And so some people aren't ready 
to heal. And if they're not, it can harm them more trying to push them when they're just not ready to hear. It can make them more confused or more resentful or angrier. So it's never about pushing. It's never about trying to convert someone into your way of thinking. Those things don't go well. If you want to be the change you want to see in the world, then focus on yourself, on speaking with your higher self and how you can be the best you you can be every day with your energy, with your actions, with your words, with how you carry yourself. When you take action on being the best you that you can be, people notice that and it inspires them to want to be more and to do more. Instead of trying to go tell them what they're not doing right and how they should do it, most people aren't going to react as positively for that, especially if they haven't asked you <laughs> for their you know, for your opinion. So instead, be the change. As you do that, your energy, your actions are being recorded in the global consciousness grid, in the frequency. And every person that stands up and takes action and lives at a higher vibration and works on themselves and cleans their aura and becomes a part of light frequency and vibration in the world, that all gets recorded in the global consciousness grid. And that holds that energy and creates more white light to support everyone here on the earth plane. It lifts them. It counterbalances the negative that's going in there from other people who are fearful or who are worried about things so much that they're just pouring all that negativity into the grid. So every time you step up with the opposite, you're cleansing it, you're lifting it, and you're making that vibration so strong that that frequency can rain down on others and help lift them back into hope and grace and serenity and a sense of peace. That is the change that you can do on a daily basis, living your best life that can have a huge impact on the rest of the world. You don't have to speak it to another person. Just being the best version of yourself raises that energy into the grid and helps lift the energy for everyone. So eventually we all get off the earth plane and the wheel of karma and off of this grid and we move up into the higher vibrations and we evolve as an entire species, all of humanity. That's what we're down here doing right now is helping each other to do that. So when you see someone else who is wounded and still struggling, wish them the best, offer them help should they ever want to accept, and then go be the best version of you that you can be. And by doing that, you carry forth their wishes and dreams, your hopes for the future. You create a safe space, a point of light in the grid to help others when they're ready. And it may not be this lifetime. It could be next. But if you've ever wondered if there's anything you can do to create a legacy, to have let the world know you were here and it mattered, this is it. It matters every day. What you get up and do, how you show up for others, what you think about, how you live, how you love, how you embrace your frequency, how you lift it. All of that is creating your legacy here. And it's all being recorded in the global consciousness grid and in your Akashic records. And your higher self is marking all of it. It is being noticed on the other side by many. So don't waste a minute. Let your highest frequency, love light, vibration, mojo, whatever you want to call it, let it out. Live and love and share with everyone. And know when you're doing that, that it matters. Every moment matters. 
you matter. From my higher self to your higher self, I'm sending you love right now and light and lots of gratitude. Thank you, thank you for being here, for caring, for doing what you do for the world, for getting up and giving all you have every day, for thinking about yourself and others and doing what you can. Thank you. My soul to yours thanks you for being aware and working and doing all that you do. So I hope you feel it right now. I'm sending you my love and my light and wishing good things for you all. All right, take care. See you next week.